Hi, I'm Dr. Philip McMillan, and I am here to keep you updated on some of the important news around COVID-19 based around my research into severe COVID-19 being an autoimmune response to a viral infection. What that means effectively is that it's not the virus that makes people die, but it's the response of the immune system. So the immune system goes into overdrive, which we call a cytokine storm, and that damages the lungs, the heart, and the kidneys, and people can die from severe COVID-19. And my research has always pointed to the fact that it is what we call a viral-mediated autoimmune disease. The virus triggers this immune response in people with specific risk factors, and that's what leads to severe COVID-19. Now, the reason that this is so important is because when I utilize this approach and this research framework, I can answer almost every question around COVID-19. More importantly, I can predict what's going to happen next. And so when this warning has come with regards to immunodeficiency after COVID infection from the German health minister, I'm not surprised. More importantly, it's very concerning but at least we're getting to a point where we're willing to discuss this. So in the link below is the link to the article, and I'll show you what the article looks like here. It's from NTV, I'll make this large grill, NTV in the politics section, and it's all in German. And so if you use your uh, browser, it can translate it into English. And when it's translated, it looks like this. Uh, Lauterbach, his name is Karl Lauterbach, warns of incurable immune deficiency caused by corona. Now, it's important to say that we knew from the start that the virus caused significant lymphopenia, means it wiped out white, um, the T cells specifically in the infection. But this recovers after most people have gotten an infection. So it's a transient thing. And it's because the virus has that impact on the T cells. These are specific white blood cells in the, in the body that are very important for fighting all kinds of infections, not just viral infections. And so this is why in severe disease, and even sometimes in milder disease, you would see a reduction in lymphocytes. There is an interesting paper that I've got here. And this paper, shows that um, SARS-CoV-2 infection causes immunodeficiency in recovered patients by down-regulating CD19 expression in B cells, not just T cells. And this paper was published in uh, 2021. Um, I think it was in September 2021 that it was published. So this was some time ago. And so it's relevant that this is something we have known about. And so it's not surprising that we have some immune changes after SARS-CoV-2 infection. The question is, what is he talking about? Immunodeficiency. And when they use that term, immunodeficiency, that's where we usually link it to HIV, human immunodeficiency virus. That's kind of the uh, connotation that comes across. And in that sense, maybe they are right because in HIV, CD4 cells are specifically targeted and taken out, as well as I think some macrophages, and it makes the immune system very weak to fight multiple infections. So what they seem to be seeing is a similar pattern with regards to COVID-19. So let's see what it is that he is talking about. And we'll go back to the article here. And here, what he's saying, anyone who gets infected with corona more often runs the risk of developing an incurable immune deficiency. And this is according to Health Minister Lauterbach, looking at various studies that are currently being researched. As a result, the risk of chronic diseases such as dementia would increase. Really interesting. Yes, again, that that is factual and that does happen in the infection. But the truth is, is that it recovers very quickly in the majority of people who have had an infection from SARS-CoV-2. Why would we be ending up with immunodeficiency 
at this point. Now, as I said, in the first and second waves of the pandemic, certainly in patients who had severe disease, even people who had some mild disease, they had a transient lowering of their lymphocyte counts um, based on the research, even the B cells, but this recovers. What he is talking about here is an incurable immune deficiency. So he goes on and he said, according to Carl Lauterbach, several, um, no, several coronavirus infections in one person can have serious consequences on the immune system. And that's what they're worried about, several coronavirus infections. And that's been the biggie at the moment with trying to understand the pattern. So here is an important thing that you need to remember. When we talk about several coronavirus infections, it's important for us to acquaint ourselves with the facts. As usual, I always use Johns Hopkins to give me an update as to what's happening. Now, across the world, cases are falling. However, that's because people are not testing, not because the virus is not circulating. So even on this picture, you can see where the disease is circulating the most. Europe, North America, Japan, some Australia, South America, but as usual, not Africa. Now, people say maybe they're not testing enough. The reality is that I've heard that since the beginning of the pandemic. Africa, for some reason, which scientists don't seem to want to look at, seems to largely be unaffected. And therefore, that leads us to the elephant in the room. Now, I'm not sure if we're at a stage yet where we can start, start talking frankly about elephants. But elephants are important because if we don't look at elephants, we don't know if elephants can be contributing to some of the patterns that we are observing in parts of the world that have lots of elephants. As you can see here, lots of elephants, it seems as though it has an impact on what we see. So this is the problem, is when science is unable to be objective, science is unable to find solutions. And that has been my biggest worry from the beginning of the pandemic. As I said, when you understand disease, you can then effectively treat it, you can manage it, you can mitigate things. But with what we're doing here now, where there are certain stones that can't be turned, there are certain elephants that can't be moved. It means that we are unable to explain some of the patterns that we are seeing. When I pull back and look at it, it to me, it seems blatantly obvious why we're having this. And it is extremely serious. From a clinical perspective, if we don't start addressing this kind of issue very soon, it means we will not have tools to mitigate some of the things that we are seeing. That's the reason why it is essential to talk about the elephants. It's essential for us to look at the elephant and see what the elephant can be doing. What are the collateral impacts that we may be overlooking with regards to clinical presentations? Because the reality is, even if we couldn't get the elephant out of the room, it may help us how we position the chairs. And that will have an impact on what it is we're doing. It's sad that at this stage, we still have to be speaking in code, but we do. And it's important for people to read between the lines and recognize that at the end of the day, science is what we have to follow. We have to become determined that no matter what we are looking at, we mustn't be afraid to face it. That seems to be the challenge that we have today. And it's something that I think that is going to hold back the advances that we need in terms of managing current disease and even learning for the future about other diseases. There are lots of lessons that we can learn from this. But sadly, at the moment, it seems that politics and finance seems to be leading most of the charge. People, we need to find answers and we need to insist on them. Science needs to be objective at all times. But yes, I would advise everyone, take a look at the article. It is very, very important. 
and join me on Substack. I'll be hopefully doing a presentation to explain in more detail as to exactly why this is happening and what it has to do with regards to immune system and the elephants floating around in the room. Have a great evening, everyone. I look forward to keeping you updated on more information soon.